I totally understand that you want to reduce your risk wherever possible. That is why I shared the information about blood pressure medications. Why having high blood pressure puts you at greater risk from coronavirus and some medications that may be implicated in that. What I've been hearing back from a lot of you is that your GPs are either unwilling to change you over or they don't even know this information, they haven't heard of it. So I'm just going to recap the information. I'm going to tell you um, how to approach your GP about this issue, what you need to do. Even if you're in isolation, I'll tell you how to navigate this um, and why it's important. So first of all, I'm going to go back to a bit of science and then I'll come to the steps that you need to go through. So I don't want you panicking. I just want to give you clear information. At this point, it seems like you are the guys that are educating your doctors. They aren't aware of this information. They are overwhelmed. This is an unprecedented situation. So I'm here to cut through the noise, give you the evidence in basic English so that you can understand it. As always, links are below this and I have all of the um, medication lists there and the alternative medication list there for you as well. So you can print them out and take them to your doctor. So I just want to get back to basics. Okay, coronavirus is a respiratory disease virus. Coronavirus causes viral pneumonia. So that is what kills people, pneumonia. Um, and actually what happens is that the lung's job is to put oxygen in the blood as it passes through. The heart pumps it to the lungs, the lungs chuck on board lots of oxygen and that oxygen goes around your body. Now if your lungs are infected and inflamed and full of fluids so you have pneumonia, that gas transfer doesn't happen in the same way. So your oxygen levels go down and down and that's what causes people to die. And you would have heard about people going on respirators, that's why they're just desperately trying to get the oxygen into their bloodstream. So they, you die from organ failure caused by oxygen starvation, really. So it's a cascade effect. So that's not meant to freak you out. That's meant to tell you it's pneumonia. That's what uh, is going on here, viral pneumonia. So you um, touch your face or itch your eye or whatever, and the, a little bit of virus gets breathed in. Now that virus, when it gets down to your lungs, uses a particular receptor site to get into your lungs and start doing all of its crazy stuff. Now that receptor site is A2, angiotensin 2. You don't need to know that, it's just A2. Now we have receptor sites all over the body. This is a receptor site that the viruses uses for access. It's a little hatch that gets it in so it can start multiplying. Okay, now why I've talked about the blood pressure drugs is that the blood pressure drugs use the same receptor site. So they use the same access point. Um, and we do have some initial evidence. So a lot of the evidence that I talk about is coming out of China and Hubei. So uh, Wuhan even and Hubei. Um, the, uh, they've just been amazing there. So not only are they saving lives, but they're gathering data so that they can save more lives around the world. So we know that the virus gets in through this <coughs> receptor. It's the same receptor that two groups of blood pressure medications use. So the risk is theoretical. We don't know yet the full impact of the fact that they use the same receptor site. But we do know that there's so many other groups of medications that you can switch to. So why wouldn't you? There's no big downside to switching drugs. All of the drugs are safe. Some of them will have side effects. Some of them you might have tried and you didn't tolerate them well. So beta blockers are a common one. Um, they usually end with OL, so propanolol, atenolol. Um, they generally all have the same kind of name. Now they are fantastic drugs, but they can um, have side effects. So you might have tried some of these drugs and you've had side effects, but they are all safe. They are all effective. I don't know the drugs you're on. Your doctor will. Please do not stop taking any of your medications. Um, but, okay, so that's the history behind it. That's why these two groups, or doctors will call them classes of drugs, so they're ARBs, 
which are like losartan, erbosartan, valsartan, and then you've got your ACE inhibitors, so that's the ramaprils and nalaprils. So they all tend to, luckily for us medical companies, tend to give them the same endings. So the ARBs, angiotensin receptor blockers, are um, the sartans, all right? And the ACEs, the ACE um, inhibitors, ACE, they tend to be the real RIL, so alanapril, Enalapril, Ramapril, um, Lisinopril, those kind of drugs, okay? And I've got them listed below. So what do you do when you watch this video and you think, oh, no, I'm on one of those drugs, or my mum is on one of those drugs, or my dad is on one of those drugs, oh my goodness, this is awful. First of all, don't panic, stay calm, it's okay. Second of all, your GPs or MDs have been instructed wherever you are in the world to do as many consultations by phone or video as possible. So it doesn't mean you need to go into your doctors. Secondly, you need to be aware that they might be resistant. These are busy people that don't want to be um, faffing around with changing every medication. And the other objection I've um, seen happen is that they don't even know this information. So this is new to them. So I've had a message from someone saying, my doctor said she needed to go away and take advice that she'd never heard of this, right? So you may come across that quite a lot. So what you wanna do is say to them, I understand this is a theoretical risk, but to protect my health, because I'm in a high risk group, can you please change me over to a different blood pressure medication that isn't an ARB, or an ACE inhibitor. So you will have, so that's what you need to say, ARB, ACE inhibitor. You can say, I've been listening to a weird lady on the internet and she explained that there are additional risks, there may be additional risks with these medications, particularly because I have an underlying condition. All right, if you are in isolation, you can still get your medication changed depending on where you are in the world. So you have a phone consultation with your doctor then um, they should be, uh, most places can send the script electronically to the pharmacist and you can get someone to collect it from the pharmacy for you or a lot of pharmacies do delivery. So if you're even in isolation or protecting yourself because you're in a high risk group, you should be able to still get your medication changed. But please, please do not stop taking your medication. We don't know how big the risk is at the moment. This is more about better be safe than sorry. If there's anything you can do to protect your health, do it. Right? Realize that this might be information that your doctors don't know and are totally up to date on because there's, this is, um, well, not a situation that none of us or any of us ever expected to be in. So it's all new for everyone and they are trying to do their best. Okay, so please share this. If you like this, leave me a comment below. Um, please like it. Um, and subscribe to my YouTube channel because you'll hear more of these. I'm doing these on a daily basis. There is a sign up link below to um, get my special coronavirus updates um, in, your e in your inbox. That's the one, not e box. Okay, everyone, so stay safe, stay aware. I don't want you worrying.